everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be checking out the highly awaited Transformers Legacy Generation Selects Titan Class Black Zarak, a figure which I know many of you, myself included, have actually been eagerly awaiting its release. This guy was announced I believe either February or March this year and at long last here in November we've actually got this guy and I've got to be honest to say that he was definitely worth the wait. As many of you know I regard the Titan Class Earthrise Scorponok as being one of the best Titans that Hasbro and Takara ever put out and to be honest with you I actually prefer the black colour scheme here for Black Zarak and I really 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 love what they've done with the headmaster. The actual head section looks fantastic. But without further ado, let's actually start off here by taking a look at Black Zarak here in the base form. Now personally, as you guys all know, and I'm sure you guys actually agree with me in saying, I find these base modes to be a little pointless. To me, they've never really resembled anything, but I guess for younger collectors, they can create for quite a cool diorama. So you can see this is exactly the same as Scorponok, sadly due to its size. I'm unable to give you a direct comparison here in the base form, but you can see it's got all of the same bells and whistles, albeit with a few additional accessories, of course, to make this actually Black Zarak, such as the Tyrant Spear that we've now got attached here onto the sides, but that really is the only aesthetic changes. Of course, the colour variation is drastically different, and in my opinion, actually looks really awesome. I love all of the paint detail that we've got going on for this almost throne section. I think the sculpt work here looks fantastic. I'll be sure to bring the camera in for a closer look, but you can see the overall sculpt work throughout this guy is fantastic, as it really was for the entire War for Cybertron trilogy. You can see we've got some nice gunmetal highlights going on there for the fire section, some really nice metallic silver sections here at the front, and I also think the ramps have been detailed really, really nicely. Now, for those of you who were recalled the original Black Zarak toy literally 9 times out of 10 would crumble out of the packaging due to the gold plastic syndrome. So I do know that this figure is going to please many of you who were unable to actually pick that original figure up or for those of you who did actually pick it up and had it actually disintegrate in your hands as this guy is built so so much better and of course once again it's based on one of the best titans Hasbro and Takara ever produced. Now for some very quick size comparisons here of course we've got the base form compared next to Black Rorichi and honestly the writing was on the wall as soon as we got this generation select Black Rorichi all of us knew that it was only a matter of time before Hasbro actually released Black Zarak, and honestly, I was expecting this guy to maybe be an SDCC exclusive and not a Generation Select release, as this is in fact one of the first Titan Generation Select releases that we've ever gotten, so really and truly, this guy opens up an entire Pandora's box of so many other Titan repaints they could in fact do. They could give us some really obscure repaints of the likes of the Ark, we may in fact even see some Fort Max repaints. Honestly, I'm really, really excited, so definitely really glad to see this scale class making its debut into the Gen Select line, and here's hoping going forward we can in fact actually get more of these obscure characters actually make their way into our collection. For some more comparisons let's bring in some of the core class figures, actual scale class that we didn't have when the original Scorponok did debut. So you can see here I actually think these guys look really cool. So we've got Megatron, Starscream and Soundwave and you can see that of course the base mode is absolutely enormous so these guys really do look very small in comparison but as they really should as of course this guy is a titan so definitely I do think it will work really really nicely here with some of those core class figures. So with everything just about covered here for the base form let's take a look at what could potentially be the main event of this set that being of course the actual headmaster black zarek himself as this truly is the component which has gone through the most changes when in comparison to the mass release scorponok so you can see in regards to the actual design it's very similar to the original zarek that we actually got with scorponok albeit the entire head unit's been redressed so you can see these shoulder pauldrons are now completely different to resemble the sides of black zarek's head but we'll touch base more with that when we actually transform it in regards to actual robot mode changes the entire torso is brand new as so is the head sculpt and I really love what they've done here. So you can see we've got this almost pirate patch covering this eye. I think the metallic purple used there for the faceplate looks really cool. And the actual gold plastic as well, I'm really happy to see, has barely any swells in that at all. So it looks really, really cool. You can see as we spin our attention to the torso, I love this awful nasty gash that we've got going throughout this section. You can see exposing some of the internal details, which just looks super, super awesome. So we've got there what appears to be some hydraulics, some cogs, and these have been picked out in almost this gut pink color scheme, which I think looks really, really awesome. And once again, you can see that nasty crack and you can in fact actually stick your finger in there so this isn't a tampo this is actual sculpted in detailing which is fantastic but the rest of the figure in terms of the robot mode appears to be exactly the same as the previous version so you can see merely just cast in black where the forearms as well as the lower section of the legs are concerned and in regards to articulation of course considering we're dealing with a headmaster this section's on a ball joint so it can look left to right as well as tilt side to side ever so slightly the arms here can rotate the full 360 hinge out to the sides we do get a rotation here at the bicep albeit very stiff double jointed elbows due to transformation, a full waist rotation, the legs can kick forwards that far on very stiff joints as well as back to I would say about that far so we just hinge out to the sides, rotation here at the thigh, 90 degree bend there at the knee and finally of course we get the signature carried over War for Cybertron ankle rocker joints which is as ever great to see. Now as we just very quickly spin our attention here to the back 
of the Headmaster. Once again, conceals pretty nicely. You can see it doesn't really have that much of a backpack going on. You can see some nice metallic red paint there, as well as some nice red paint going on here for the sides of the legs. But with the details of this guy pretty much wrapped up, let's of course bring in the Earthrise Scorponok Zarax to see how these figures actually compare. You can see that in regards to the actual skeleton, they are very, very similar. It is merely just some of those external components that form the head of which have changed, and of course the torso as well as the head sculpt. But as we just spin our attention here to the sides, you can see the arms are exactly the same as so are these entire lower sections of the legs. This skirt piece also appears to be the same. And then as we just turn our attention here to the back, once again, you can see the similarities and differences. It truly is just those head components of which have in fact actually been modified. And you can see here we have in fact actually got quite a drastically different design going on here for the back of the legs when in comparison to the version that we got going on with Scorponox. So definitely a lot of new tooling going on with this guy, which was something that I didn't actually expect when seeing some of those initial digital renders. Now very quickly showcasing the actual headmaster that is within the headmaster, you can see it's very simple to remove. Of course, if we just fold out the legs, it does reveal some really nice detailing going on for the body. You can clearly see the arms of which are indeed on ball joints. So we do get a pretty decent range of motion going on for these. And I was actually quite surprised to see how well painted that head is, considering it's super, super small. Now for a comparison with the version that came with Scorponok, you can see there that the bodies do appear to in fact be different as so do the head sculpts. So once again, some really nice retooling going on with this and really was an area that I wasn't expecting them to in fact actually modify. And you will in fact notice that throughout the base, there are indeed some of these tiny little pegs of which stick up. These are indeed compatible with the holes in the feet of this tiny headmaster. So if you've got some of those figures left over from Titan's Return, then you can definitely peg them here onto the base. And once again, it could create for a really, really nice playset. So with everything just about wrapped up here for base mode, as well as in regards to the robot mode of the headmaster, we're going to turn to transformation. Now I am in fact going to do the conversion sequence a little different when in comparison to previous reviews, just as it is essentially exactly the same as Earthrise Scorponok. And I just want to give you guys a slightly different viewing experience. So without further ado, let's get Black Zarak transformed here from the base form into the Scorpion mode. And so here we have Black Zarak fully transformed up into the Scorpion mode and much like the base mode for the most part this guy is almost identical to Earthrise Scorponok. He merely only differs in regards to the head as well as a new additional sting accessory of which actually attaches onto the tail and I will be honest and say that I am indeed a really big fan of this but you can see as always this is a massive piece so unfortunately once again I'll be unable to give you guys a direct comparison between Black Zarak Scorpion mode to Scorponok but it is for the most part exactly the same besides the colour scheme now so very quickly showcasing 
him here from the side you can see we've got some really awesome red bursts scattered throughout the claws of which you'll probably see more of when we actually get him transformed up into bot mode but as always really awesome sculpt work going across the entire figure you can see some nice gun metal highlights here towards the back we've got two cannons attached here onto the side I do kind of wish he came before but we'll touch base more with that when we actually get him transformed up into bot mode and as I just very quickly bring the camera in for a closer look so that we can focus now on that new head sculpt to be completely honest I actually don't think the headmaster looks that great here for the scorpion mode I'm really not a huge fan of how you can see the pins visible from the thighs and how you can essentially see the entire skirt piece as well as the thighs I really wish Takara could have found some kind of way to have in fact actually added an additional flap which could have come from the underside or maybe they could have buried it within this helmet section just so that this could have been concealed from a bird's eye perspective it doesn't look that bad considering of course we've got these really beady bug purple eyes going on here for the top and the actual shade of red that painted this in looks fantastic I cannot fault that at all and of course you've got the ears of the robot mode which do become the mandibles here for the scorpion mode so that does look pretty cool but once again it would have been nice if they could have found some kind of way to make this section a little bit more concealed or just of course a little more interesting but other than that I guess it does resemble what we saw from the original toy and to be fair who's really going to keep this guy in a scorpion mode nine times out of ten you're definitely going to want to get him into that robot mode And so here we have the Transformers Legacy Generation Selects Titan Class Black Zarak fully transformed up into the robot mode and once again looking absolutely fantastic. Honestly, this guy's turned out really, really awesome. Now, of course, he is essentially just a repaint of Scorponok. So for those of you who own that guy, you'll know exactly what to expect in regards to the base body. The major differences really are only in the color scheme, the Tyrant Spear accessory, as well as that brand new head sculpt. But honestly, I really do think they make all of the difference, especially where that head is concerned. So without further ado, let's bring this guy in for a closer look and check Check out that wicked looking Black Zarak head sculpt. So the head sculpt here for Black Zarek in bot mode honestly is just the icing on the cake. This looks so so awesome. They've done a fantastic job and they've really captured his appearance from that original Japanese series. Now you can see in regards to the detail much like some of the older War for Cybertron figures he's absolutely loaded with it. So even as we turn here to the side you can see some fantastic sculpt work. Most noticeably would be here for these ear sections. I think these look really impressive as so does the metallic red paint that the entire head has in fact actually been painted in. All of the red areas are indeed paint and none of it is plastic. So once again they definitely did spend a lot of time in really nailing the look of this and as we actually turn our attention to the main face plate itself I do like the shade of gold that we've got going on here I think the sculpt work for the mouth the chin and the nose looks really impressive and I also like the black metallic highlights that we've got going on around the eyes just to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt and the metallic purple once again I think looks really really awesome so overall in regards to this head sculpt honestly I cannot fault it at all I think they've done a fantastic job it really just is in the scorpion mode where I wish maybe they could have added an additional flap just to really conceal those thighs but of course that's just a minor critique for what is otherwise a really really impressive piece now for the rest of the body I won't in fact actually be homing in in as much detail as I have done here for the head just as it is exactly the same as what we got with our fry scorpionox so I'll merely just be very briefly going over the details and I'll very quickly touch base here with the articulation of this as I am sure there are a few of you who are curious in how this actually articulates when in comparison to scorpionox so once again we still get that incredibly stiff rotation joint left to right and we also do get that awesome neck joint which of course can allow this guy to pivot up and down and honestly I just think that's super impressive 
impressive. Just showing you guys how that looks from a side perspective. You can definitely get Black Zarak looking down upon the Autobots, which I think is super, super impressive. So overall, in regards to this area, once again, I think Takara Tomy knocked it out of the park. So very quickly moving down to the lower part of Black Zarak, you can see in regards to the detail, it's exactly the same as Scorponok. It is merely just the color which differs. So we've got these awesome gunmetal highlights here on the sides. I think the sculpt work for this guy in general was awesome. So you can see some really nice hydraulic as well as circuitry detailing. This chest unit's turned out really nicely. You can see there those metallic gunmetal flaps of which I've actually got a darker gunmetal applied just to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt, which I think looks really cool. You can see the Decepticon insignia slap bang there in the center, as well as this almost turquoise paint app as well. As we turn our attention here to the shoulders, sadly, much like Scorponok, we only do get one pair of cannons included with this and not four. And considering this is a Gen Select release, I do wish that maybe Takara could have thrown in an additional pair, but no doubt we will in fact get all of the same upgrade pieces that we saw from DNA Design actually cast in the same color as this guy. So definitely looking forward to that. But as we look here at the arms, there are some paint apps of which are missing from the digital renders. So we don't get the red detailings here on these circular pieces, but the sculpt work looks really cool. You can see here for the claws, some nice silver, some nice red. Of course, we've got the shield there on the side. And you can see there's some nice red detailings. As we flip here to the torso, you can see some very reflective silver going on here. It almost looks like an old traditional foil sticker, which of course you would see on those original toys. And you can see here, just turning our attention here to the thighs, I think this looks awesome. Especially once again, that almost turquoise paint that we've got going on, I think that looks fantastic. And then finally, spinning our attention down to the lower section, you can see some nice purple, gold, silver and of course incredibly vibrant golden toes now the actual upper section is painted in gold where the tip of the toes are merely just cast out of it but honestly i don't think that it looks too bad at all although there is no denying that that painted gold looks a little better when in comparison to just the cast gold plastic but overall definitely a fantastic figure and for those of you who are into these more niche characters then black zarak here is definitely going to look really really awesome in your collection now very quickly going over black zarak's awesome tyrant spear accessory you can see this is massive honestly it's almost as big as the actual figure if you've got him in a crouch pose it does in fact actually tower over him so definitely a really intimidating piece and honestly looks fantastic you can see in regards to sculpt work i think that looks really impressive all of these segments are in fact individual so you could remove some of them if you so desired and perhaps use them for the smaller headmaster when in robot mode or you could attach them into various places throughout the base mode or the scorpion mode but definitely really cool you can see some decent sculpt work going on for the actual handle and of course here towards the tip we have once again got this really nice dagger now sadly much like we saw when we actually actually transformed the fast track into an actual spear for Scorponok. He doesn't in fact actually hold this all that well. So really and truly you are just supposed to just clasp the hand like that. But nine times out of 10, it is more than likely going to droop. But to be fair, I actually think he looks pretty cool in some poses such as this. So you can see there, he's got the Tyrant Spear, and if you do in fact actually utilize both hands, then he can hold it pretty firmly. But it would have been awesome to have seen maybe a slight modification made to the hand itself, or maybe an actual clasp where it could have in fact actually clipped firmly into the side of the hand. But once again, in terms of a display piece, I think it looks awesome. And as we just flip here to this side, you can see the exact same shield that we got with Scorponok, this time just cast out of gold plastic with some nice metallic gold highlights. I shan't be going through the articulation on this guy, as mentioned before, and it's exactly the same as Scorponok, but overall super, super intimidating looking figure. And with that Tyrant Spear, honestly, Black Zarak is definitely a force to be reckoned with. And here for a Titan class comparison, of course, we've got Black Zarak compared next to the previously released Earthrise Scorponok. Now, bearing in mind, I have all of the upgrade pieces on Scorponok, so he does look a little different visually when in comparison to Black Zarak, but I can assure you that the base body is exactly the same. And we'll no doubt actually get all of these upgrade pieces recolored to match Black Zarak. And I'm definitely all for that, as I think he look killer with some of those enhancements but definitely really nice pieces personally i think there's enough difference here with black zarak to worth actually picking him up especially if you're a fan of the character you're a fan of the japanese cartoon series of which this guy is actually based upon and to be fair scorponox a great titan so to get it reissued here in a black color scheme honestly i think it's just the icing on the cake and especially considering that scorponox is quite hard to obtain now black zarak may in fact actually be the best bet to get this guy or to get this mold in the collection should i say so definitely i highly recommend him and when putting both of these together i'm definitely glad to own both of them as I think they really really do look awesome. So some final thoughts here for the Transformers Legacy Generation Selects Titan Class Black Zarak. Overall I really like this guy. Once again he's a slightly niche character when in comparison to some of the previous mainline figures that we've gotten but that's the whole point of Generation Selects and honestly I'm so glad that Takara Tomy are in fact branching out into the Titan Class assortment. As mentioned at the beginning of this review it really does open an entire Pandora's box of other repaints they could do on the likes of Omega Supreme. We could even in fact even see Trypticon. We could see perhaps even the Ark go through 
some changes. So definitely really, really exciting times ahead. I think Black Zarek was a great figure to, in fact, actually start off with. I know he was one that many, myself included, really, really were holding out hope for. And honestly, I think he's turned out great. Where that head sculpt is concerned for bot mode, I think it looks fantastic. The Tyrant Spear is also a really nice inclusion. Whilst he can't hold it that well here for bot mode, I still do think on display he looks killer. And the overall colorization, honestly, is just fantastic. So overall, if you're a fan of the character, you're a fan of the mold, as mentioned beforehand, this could in fact actually be the best way to get this mold into the collection. As Scorponok does go for astronomical prices on the aftermarket, then I would definitely recommend to pick him up. I think he looks fantastic displayed with some of your other War for Cybertron and no doubt legacy figures. I think he's going to look killer and he'll no doubt be a showpiece considering how big he is, that being a Titan class. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys thought of both the figure and the review. Is Black Zarek one that you plan on adding to your collection or is he in fact an easy miss? As always, I thank you guys all so much for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.